uh, makeup effects came first. Uh, um, I started off young as an artist, and my mother was an artist, and so I kind of got into the monsters and drawing fantasy characters and comic book characters and stuff growing up. Um, and then once I discovered that there was an industry for people making, you know, to make monsters for a living, um, I got really hooked into that. And that was kind of my entry into the whole film scene, you know, really getting on set, doing something other than directing was how I learned to direct was doing, you know, the craft of makeup effects. And then, um, you do so many things in makeup effects, like storyboarding and figuring out a sequence and a progression of like a transformation or something that it kind of, it kind of just led to me wanting to direct. Directors, I was a huge John Carpenter fan growing up, you know, I had all the posters on my wall and um, so I followed him early on, but you know, uh, Spielberg, um, you know, I, I had a lot of standard, um, you know, directors here, but uh, I grew up watching like um, the Hammer movies and um, you know, of course, the Godzilla films, the Universal Pictures and stuff, and a lot of it was watching Saturday afternoon movies and or late night horror host shows. Um, and so a lot of the movies I watched, ha I had to watch when they came out on TV, and at that time there was no cable. You know, the only one kid on the block would have cable and you'd try to stay over to his house to watch stuff, you know. Um, so I, I just got, you know, hooked on fantasy films of, you know, the Harryhausen films and you know, I was just like, oh my God, these creatures are amazing. And, you know, I was just sucked into that thing. I'd sit in front of the TV drawing or building things with Legos, you know, from the time I was little, watching uh, horror films all, all weekend while everybody played sports outside. And uh, I was a kid that stayed in and didn't want to do anything. Got a you know, bowl of chips and a Coke and sat in front of the TV all day. So, uh, yeah, I think, I mean, but it's kind of that way with independent cinema even today. That's where you know, the innovation comes out of that, those um, films, not having money, not having time, um, trying to make something bigger than what you really have, you know, uh, to work with. And, it, and I think that it, the 80s was that time, and especially with all the, um, the effects being done then, it was kind of like, this was the new thing. And so now it was, everybody was trying to one-up themselves, you know, or each other, and uh, come up with something new, you know. And, Everybody was like, you know, we got to have this and every movie has to have monster effects in it or something, you know. So everybody was trying to do something new and unique each time. And sometimes it worked and sometimes it didn't. But, um, yeah, there's a lot of fun rubber monster movies. It's kind of fun seeing all the movies uh, that I worked on and then a lot of them being remade right now and stuff. And it's kind of weird um, that they're considered classics. Uh, well, today it seems like everything is made faster now and cheaper so um and that's you know back in the the day we used to be able to um take what was called r d time uh prior to starting a show and that was our research and development time where we could try to come up with something new um and experiment with things and then now it's just like they hey you have six weeks we shoot in six weeks and you know when they did the thing rob botin had like a year of R&D prepping you know ahead of time and and then now if you did the thing it would be like you got 10 weeks you know so uh, I think that's what kind of it, it uh, has ruined a little bit of like innovation and you know you know see something unique and new because there's nothing you know now everybody's doing CGI because it's simple they can make up make it up and post they don't have to make a decision now during shooting but there's a you know there's nothing really that we can't achieve um, given the time to figure it out, you know, um, and you see things like that, like there's a lot of effects done in, um, in movies where there's like the weird things stretching out and, and it's just a lot of, uh, little camera tricks or cable, cable tricks and inflating bags and weird stuff to get, get these things to look cool. And, uh, those, those all came out of just people experimenting with, you know, literally garbage bags and stuff. I don't, you know, um, just uh, if you saw, uh, or you know, the um, uh, what the hell are they called? The uh, ah, it's the alien ripoff. What is that? It's not alien, but species. it's Giger species. Yeah, there's a lot of effects in species. Uh, Steve Johnson came up with these really cool baggy things that would inflate, and it was just garbage bags and heat gun, and you know, but just experimenting with different things, you find you go, oh wait, that might work for this effect, you know. Um, and there's there's not much of that anymore because everybody falls back on the CG. 
and just says, you know, we don't have time for that. We'll figure it out and post. And then you got 10, 12 different guys throwing their two cents into the thing, you know, producers or whatever. And, uh, and that's the problem. They can, they can change it as much as they want because it's digital. They can go in and do whatever they want. And it kind of, um, I prefer to have it there on the set and uh, have the actors interact with it, which is, you always can tell when they're not interacting with anything. Um, well, at the beginning, he's like a big kid. And he's still that way. He's a big kid in a candy store. He's got, you know, he's like, how much, how many toys and how much candy can I have to play with today, you know? And that's what made him fun because he has this energy and, um, and, and he really respected the artists working around him and had fun with us, you know? Um, and it was that way even on Army. And I became a director because of Sam a lot. I mean, Sam recommended me for Wishmaster and, um, uh, and he was always, you know, I'd show him my, my first movie. He was always like very, you know, um, uh, he'd come see the film or, you know, um, and very supportive. And, uh, and I kind of, his, the, the way he directs is kind of the way I like to do it. I mean, he's, I like to do the same thing. Like if I'm standing behind a monster, you always see me going, Rawr, you know, doing the, the monster face and the, and the voices, which Sam does all the time on set. He's always doing the deadite voice, you know, like, ah, that's what I saw, you know, and he's, doing the thing behind the camera. So um, I think the Army of Darkness was another one that was so much fun to work on because um, it was like a bunch of kids up in the desert and there's a castle, you know, and, and guys on horseback and skeleton warriors everywhere. And you're just like, this is great, you know? And then every night we were blowing something up. So it was like, it was really fun, you know? My dad came to set one day um, or one week and he couldn't believe how much we swore because he, he was not around the movie set that much and we just f bombs every five seconds right and then um <clears throat> but he would you know stand around the set and watch what we were doing and we were always blowing something up and there was always 10 guys doing something with puppets or you know and he was just amazed like you guys do this every night you know and I'm like yeah this is fun isn't it yeah i'm not right next to a bomb every night and you watch some of the behind the scenes footage and uh you're like, I can't believe we did that. Like, we were literally right there when the explosion went off, you know, with blankets and things hitting you. And, um, but those films were just so much fun. And I think it's because, too, Sam and Rob and Bruce kind of put family units together, the people they like to work with over and over again. And, and so that makes a big difference, too. I did work on uh, Oz the Great and Powerful for three months up in Detroit with him and got to apply a lot of makeups for the movie. And, um, and the same thing, you, uh, you, he's one of those directors, you, you could stand behind him at the monitor and he's happy to have you there. And you can ask him a question, so Sam, why are you doing it this way? Ah, you know, and he'll tell you. And, it, and it's like, it's just great watching him work. Now it's more corporate, he's working for big company, you know, big budgets. And, uh, but he's still got that same kind of kid thing, you know, enthousi enthusiasm going on there and it's great. Um, although now he wears a tie, and a, you know, but he's got a lot more pressure, but he, you know, he still has fun with it. Well, Wishmaster, only because I directed it, so I really, I, but I really liked that character and, uh, and the design that we came up with. Um, uh, Bride of Rihanna, I love the bride. Um, uh, the character, the Army of Darkness, another one. I just love all the different skeleton warriors and the witch and everything. Everything was just fun and a little over the top. And, and, um, and then there's Dustal Dawn, I think that was, I mean, just as far as the mass amount of stuff. Like Dustal Dawn and Army of Darkness had so much stuff in it that we were busy every day and on set. And a lot of times you're on a movie and there's nothing to do for a week or two, you know, until your big moment comes, you know. And on those films, it, it was those moments were every day. So you were doing something every day and you never got bored and you never got tired or, you know, sitting around. You get actually more tired sitting around than you do working. So uh, the adrenaline was up on those films, you know. And most recently, Tusk. Um, it was my first time working with Kevin, and we had a very short period of time to build that suit. Like, I almost didn't take the job, but I really wanted to work with him. It was like five weeks to do everything, and it was crazy. And, we, and I thought, you know, we turned out something kind of unique, and um, people seemed to dig it, and I had a great time making it, so. Same thing as um, when we work f with filmmakers like um, um, Kevin or um, Quentin or Robert, um, there's this kind of shorthand because we all grew up on the same movies and, and kind of came up this similar time together. Um, so when, when I talk to Kevin or any of those other guys, it's like, 
you know, you can bring up certain things and instantly know what we're referencing or what we're thinking, you know. So working with Kevin's the same thing. So you can throw out a couple of things back and forth and then boom, yeah, we're on the new track, you know. And then the script changes sometimes. It's weird. Um, you come up with an idea and the next day Kevin's writing it in the script, you know. Um, and he, all he had to do is say, yeah, it's a patched work, you know, of uh, like human skin. And I go, so it's like, you know, Frankenstein, Leatherface, you know, it's like, and then instant, you know, one or two sketches later and boom, you know, we're on the same page. So um, he's really fun to work with. And he's got a great sense of humor and really loves and respects the, the crew as well. The industry is brutal, um, you know, even for actors and such. It's like you have to have a thick skin and you have to be determined and you have to um, not give up. It's so easy just to give up, but uh, it's hard work. People think, you know, oh yeah, you just do this and it falls in your lap and you become famous and you know, and, but reality is those people worked really hard and they, there's a lot of up and ups and downs. So uh, as, a, as far as a makeup effects artist, uh, draw, do anything creative. I mean, that's the whole point of being an artist is, is to be creative. Yeah, you may be a starving artist, but which most most are, and uh, even even me in the industry now, the industry industry is up and down. It's not like always, you know. There's not eight million dollar gigs anymore, you know. And so, it's like doing. You have to do low budget, big budget, and then other art. I mean, cre it's about creating and and you know, coming up with ideas and then selling it to people. You know, I mean, I'm I'm not a, a fine artist. <laughs> I'm a commercial artist, you know. So. Um, but I think, it, same with a filmmaker, it's just go out there and shoot something. Everybody likes to talk about it and then, you know, and critique other people or whatever. Well, get out and just do it on your own. Just, you know, any, today is the greatest time ever for doing that where, you know, you have all this equipment. You can you do it yourself on laptops and shoot it yourself, you know, and even shoot it on a cell phone. I mean, it's, it's all there. You know, they have all the tools now and just go out and do it.